What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. So I am getting ready to do some more wrenching and driving of the dually. I hope you guys had a great July 4th weekend and holiday. Today is Sunday the 6th. So whenever I was up in Lamar, I stopped by the house obviously and I got a bunch of parts for the dually. Just stuff that I had laying around from previous trucks and, and whatnot. So. I did have another throttle linkage. That was our big deal. Like that's one of the main reasons I can't drive it. I don't. I also don't have an elbow for the turbo. I almost forgot about that. So that is our throttle linkage right now because the plastic end broke off. And as you guys had already saw, elbow for the turbo, no good. So I don't have one of those. One of those is in route thanks to Ryan. He is sending me one. And those are the main things, the reason why it's not running right now, or I don't care to drive it, obviously. Um, it's also not charging, which I'm going to be taking care of that. I will have stuff on order there. But that is kind of what we're doing today. Looks like there's more of a leak under there than there was. Yeah. That rear main's dripping, and I don't know what I think about it. It's kind of a pain. But I grabbed some other stuff, too, while I was there. We got engine stand for Andy. I brought the wheels because I needed the caps and I didn't have anything to get the caps off with. And I've got leveling coils for the dually. Now, yes, I know you guys are be like, oh, well, you should slam it, not level the front. I feel like any of you guys that have actually been around two wheel drive first gens know that stock height in the front, a 32 inch tire damn near touches the top, top of the fender stock height. Like, I don't know. I, fig I figured I might put them in and give it a look if i don't like them i will take them back out and we'll drop the the rear a little bit uh, but yeah it's gonna be used to tow so i really don't want to mess that up but we brought back some open caps for the sidewinders some axle nut sockets to do to work on that on both trucks really let's see i've got some tps stuff pump gear removal rear, or front main seal Where's my linkage? Here's one of my other linkages that is in good working condition. The right stuff and a ton of wiring things. A few tools, but a ton of stuff to wire. Wire the truck and like connectors, all that good stuff. Because we will need it. We will indeed need it. Because we got lots of stuff to fix on the dually. I mean, we can stand in the shade because it's very hot already. But yeah, we got lots of wiring to take out. We got some wiring, wiring to add. And yeah, so I saw this immaculate first gen. Uh, I'm actually gonna throw the picture up right here. Uh, it's for sale in Rich Hill, Missouri. I had to stop by and see it and talk to the owner. He wants 20 grand, but it's hands down the most flawless truck I've ever seen. Like I would, I would do anything to own that truck. That's it's wild. But uh, I, I'm sure he will sell it. It's super clean. It's an auto truck. It literally like the paint is unreal and it's factory. It's just been taken really good care of. But yeah, that was a cool little endeavor yesterday. I got to I got to talk to him and But today we're working on our shit box. So do some minor stuff, but I need to go get food first before I get hangry. But hopefully you guys are having a good weekend and ready for another one. Alright guys, as I'm throwing this new linkage in, and this one had somewhat modified already. Um, I just wanted to point out some things you might notice, like how loose and untensioned the throttle lever arm or whatever you'd like to call it is. So as a little plug here, you can contact Mr. Evan Ratcliffe that builds all my pumps, Ratman Performance, he's the real deal, as all you guys have already seen, and it's no secret, but like this is sloppy. You will feel this, you will feel a difference at the pedal with this. So what I recommend you do is get a hold of Evan and say, hey, my throttle arm is really sloppy and there's a spring in here that he carries that he has found and sourced and he has replacements and you can throw a new spring in there. So what I'm going to do is do that same thing. Tell Evan I need a new spring. And if this is war, this pin that sits right in here, it's hard to see, but the little pin, it can get war. Um, you can 
tingle, you could take that off and either weld it up a little bit and grind it back down so it's back to a full size pin and not just have a ton of slop in it. But that spring would take a lot of the slop out or all of it, depending on if your pins were. Yeah, get a hold of Evan, he can get you a new one, along with another box of pump parts that are all good. And I will be getting a hold of him for the AFC line because he sells those, he sells all the stainless bolts for it. All the dress up stuff, all the performance stuff. You get a clip. He sells governor springs that are already clipped and ready to go, so you don't have to mess with it, which is even more convenient. And yeah, he doesn't just do pumps, he has a whole bunch of uh, parts on hand to ship to you that you can put into your pump. So there's a little plug for the day for Evan. All right, we are adjusting. Well, I've been adjusting some things. Not really, it, it's just basically tightening up some of the linkages and taking the one of the ball ends off of this so I can put my new linkage on. Um, you can see on this, the rod has a big, basically, groove in it as well as the side of the spring. So this is extremely loose, but looking at the I took this nut off looking at the indexing it is indexed incorrectly um, it's limiting the throttle link it's basically it's limiting the governor spring travel or the linkage travel on the insides basically with how it's uh, indexed so I will give that more attention when I swap governor springs but as far as this goes we took the inside ball off and we're gonna put our linkage on the inside because that utilizes the most amount of travel that the bell crank has. This is better, I don't know, some would think that this on the outside is better leverage, but on the inside you get further travel with the bell crank. So, as you can see, which most of you might realize, your factory feed line, your linkage does hit it once, the, once you start figuring out how to get more travel out of your linkage. So, what I usually do is I'll take this linkage off and I will grind all that off of the linkage so it gets full travel because it's already hitting right there and more probably three quarter travel or so so just some food for thought there but i'm gonna mount this up on the inside one all right guys so after making the rod fit i went ahead and i was going to adjust our issue here with our full throttle travel so as i had mentioned it hits the fuel inlet line this uh, lever does so i ground it down to where it's flush and we shouldn't have any problems there. I figured I would also show you guys if it will focus, which will probably be a pain. You see the groove right there in that pin? That's where a lot of that slop comes from, where that spring rides. It's been right in that same spot for the past 30 years. So it's easy to get a little bit of a welder and tack that up and smooth it back out and there's no more groove and then you get yourself a new, a new spring that isn't wore out because as you can see right in there it's got a big old groove worn in it from the pin so there's small things like that that most people don't talk about Alright guys, so I stopped filming after, God, I gotta keep remembering to turn this way. So I quit filming after that fuel screw debacle, um, I reassembled the pump, 
and everything, but I wanted to preface. Whenever people say crank the fuel screw or something like that, even me, like I've said it plenty, that does not mean literally turn it in as hard as you can. Once there's any sort of resistance, like you can stop. As soon as it's hand tied in there and, it's, and it stops, if it's in good working shape, go ahead and stop. There's no point in cranking that thing as hard as you can. I had to double nut it and put nearly all of my weight on it. Like I have no idea how there's still threads in that pump. Like I was for sure thinking, oh well, pump's gonna have to come off and I will swap a different pump top on it because it is bad. Luckily, it broke free. It, only, it pulled a little, like half of one thread. I don't know which one. It seems to be fine. It threaded back in, but it is bent from that little O-ring up just as you guys saw. Um, so I will be getting a different fuel screw because there's no point, but um, I'm not gonna be doing that until we probably pull the pump off and look and see if the fulcrum and everything in there is okay or if it's also bent is crap uh, more than likely it's going to be bent that was that's absolutely ridiculous um there's no need for that so please do not crank the crap out of your fuel screw just to try and get a little bit extra like there's there's no point you're just going to break stuff i'm very fortunate that the truck still runs and none of the levers are broken because it it really shouldn't be like that. Most people's luck is it breaks breaks the linkages internal of the pump, which makes a lot of sense. All right, guys, so we got the elbow swapped out. As you saw, it was very cracked, like I'd shown you before. Um, went for a ride it still feels I mean pretty much the same there was probably a little bit of boost leak still makes about 28 psi and it moves out of its way okay for a stock 518 dually truck I mean it is what it is I'm it's a lot better than it was so I will take it but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off and say because I'm not sure what will be in the next video we need to do the HVLP video so we'll probably hop on that here next either that or kind of cleaning it up one of the two so until the weekend, I will probably see you guys next time. Keep kicking it old school. Peace out.